Hallelujah. Thank you to the musicians and singers tonight for helping with the service. And I uh, always enjoy being in the presence of the Lord. How about you? Look at Acts chapter 10. I'm going to read verses 34 to 48. And you're familiar with this passage. It is what we commonly refer to as the birth. Not the birth, but when the, the salvation plan was shared with the Gentiles. And the Gentiles were able to be grafted into that natural olive branch of the Jews. So we're going to see what happens here. It says, Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word I say, ye know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of a devil, for God was with him. Say, God was with him. And he healed all that were oppressed of the devil. We are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us, who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and dead. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also is poured out the, Holy, or the gift of the Holy Ghost. How did they know? Because the Bible says, For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. I want to teach tonight on this topic, the miraculous word. Look at somebody and just say the miraculous word. The miraculous word. Let's pray. Father, I love you. Thank you, Lord, for your people that are here tonight, Jesus. We ask you to open our hearts and our minds to your word. Anoint their ears to hear and my words to speak your anointed word. Well, right now, in Jesus' name, and everybody said in Jesus' name, and you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Praise His name. Somebody said praise the Lord. Why don't you just raise your hand and praise the Lord. Don't just say it, praise Him. I praise you, Jesus. I worship you. I magnify you, Jesus. I exalt your name. I adore you, Jesus. I thank you, God, for this day that you've given us. Your blessings, Jesus. We thank you. Give you praise and glory and honor, God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. The miraculous word. Brother Harper made a statement Sunday morning when he was teaching the Sunday adult class that has stayed on my mind since he said it. He said, the secret of the followers of Jesus is that they brought to Jesus the sick, the lame, and the bound. Then those people were healed and delivered. This is also the secret of the church. Bring them to Jesus. How many know that we need to bring people to Jesus? Amen? And so if we want to see the same miraculous power that was displayed in Jesus' day, in the church today, we need to bring people to the, the one who can heal. That is Jesus Christ. It is still true that word of mouth will either grow or destroy a business. How many know that? Uh, here re uh, about a year ago, almost, uh, one of my favorite local restaurants failed their Cabell Huntington Health Department restaurant inspection. 
they didn't just fail. They failed on every point. I'm not going to name names or anything like that. I'm just going to say that when I read the report and it said that those violations were associated with foodborne illness, something in me churned and said, I don't think I'll ever be there again. That was word of mouth. I, I have not been back. Now, they have, in fact, corrected those issues. They passed their inspection. But that negative report has stuck in my mind. And even though I know up in my brain up here somewhere that that place is probably okay to go to now because of the report I heard, not just on the Herald-Dispatch, but in the social media. And how many know social media can take something and run a long way with it? Uh, something inside of me said, I'm not going. In fact, I suggested to my wife the other day when we was walking by that place, just kind of jokingly, you want to go there? She said, no, we're not going. And I was gonna, I'm not going to tell you where it's at, but we're not going to go there. And uh, that's a negative report. And it has colored my decision about going to what was at one time one of my favorite restaurants to frequent here in the city of Huntington. Now, I've also been needing a pair of shoes uh, to give me good support in my feet and my ankles because I have some foot pain sometimes. And my wife heard about a particular brand of shoes that everyone is raving about and talking about. And she, being the wonderful wife that she is, took me out Friday night and bought me this pair of shoes. I wouldn't normally buy these shoes for myself, but she bought them for me. And I want to tell you, those shoes are fantastic. When I wear them, my feet do not hurt. I feel like I'm walking on clouds. That's a positive report. I heard, or she heard about it. I had heard about it a little bit. And then we went and took care of it because of the positive report about hearing that. It's the same thing in the church. We tend to focus on either the negative or the positive, broadcast, or positive, positive messages that are broadcast by people. Uh, you've heard somebody say, don't go to that church, you know. They got this going on or that. Or some people say, you know, that church is a fantastic church. They got revival going on. But we want, as a congregation, we want every pastor in a congregation of a church, every saint, wants to have rave reviews in their community. Um, I'd like to believe also that I have never done anything or acted in some way that somebody would have a negative view of me. And share that with somebody else. Because I want, and I'm sure you want, to be a positive influence in the world and the environment that we're around. I want to be able to lead people to Christ. And how can I lead them to Christ if I don't have a positive reputation in the community? Uh, that's what they says. One of the um, qualifications of an elder or a bishop is that you're supposed to have a good reputation with people, not just in the body of Christ, but it says without the body. And so um, I'm happy to, when I go out in town, I can talk to somebody and they have a positive image of Life Cathedral. Just today, my wife and I were talking to a local businessman about something. And uh, I mentioned that I was a minister at the church. And he said, where at? And I told him about Bishop Harper. And he said, you know, he has a very positive reputation in the city of Huntington. I was happy to hear that. How about you? Amen? Because we want to have that. This is a man who is well-respected in the community, and he has a, a good uh, view of the bishop based upon the reputation that he has, meant, he has managed to keep in this town over these over 30 years of pastoring. So what I'm telling you tonight is that we are all somehow responsible for the message that we are telling people, either in our daily life or in the words that come out of our mouth every day. If you are on the job and you have a reputation for being, uh, trying to find the right word, uh, surly, how's that? Uh, people aren't wanting to spend time around you. If you're the type of person that stirs up drama all the time, you're gonna get that kind of reputation. If you're the kind of person that when people think about you, they don't think positively about it, they dread those activities, you might need to work on that display in your life so that you can change the narrative and that people can say, you know what, I like to be around him. I, I like to be around her. They're fun to be with. They're positive, and they have, uh, they have a lot going on. It's good. 
I told you before, I'll tell you again, when I was in Kokomo years ago, we went through a time where the church didn't grow much in a year, uh, which, was not, which was unusual for that church where I was at in Kokomo. And so uh, at the beginning of the new year, the pastor had all the uh, men and women that were on the outreach staff. He talked to them and said, listen, I know you all have dinner with people in the church. You, you spend time around the saints of God. And I want you at some point in every conversation you're having to talk about the good things that are going at, on at the church right now. And so we begin to focus on the positive things. Didn't have to lie. Just say, you know, what a wonderful service we had Sunday. Uh, so-and-so received the Holy Ghost, or this one was baptized in Jesus' name, or did you hear that she was healed of whatever ailment? And so we began to talk about the positive things, and what happened was that positive word got out. People began attending church more. We began to have more of the miraculous move of the Holy Ghost, and that year the church had a record-breaking year in growth because we focused on the positive things that were going on, and we were spreading that word around town as well, because listen, people hear you. They know your conversations. That's why i got to tell you, you need to be careful what you're talking about in the restaurants, because everybody can hear you. You may not think they're paying attention. My wife likes to remind me all the time, somebody can hear you, and that discretion is our friend. Amen? And so we want to be a positive influence in the city. How then did the fame of Jesus spread? There was no television. There was no internet. There was no radio. It was mouth to mouth. Uh, even later on, as the gospel was spread, spread throughout the world, they tell us that there were men and women that traveled from Jerusalem, some because of persecution. They would arrive on the docks of these outlying coastal cities along the Mediterranean, and they would stand on the docks, and they would simply preach Jesus on the docks of these Mediterranean towns until people were born again right there in that area. And then they would establish a, a group of a community of believers. And then when that was all said and done, they would get on a boat and go on their way. But they preached Jesus everywhere that they went. And the Bible says in Matthew chapter 4, And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people, that were taken with divers diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had palsy, and he healed them. He healed them, why? Because they brought those people to Jesus. If we want to see the revival that we've been promised, that the Lord has given us through tongues interpretation and prophetic words, and it's promised in the Word of God, if you follow certain principles in the Word of God, one of the things is we have to bring people to Jesus and to the place where they can receive their healing and receive their deliverance. And so it is incumbent upon the body of Christ to do that job. It is not the pastor's job alone to go out and to get people to come to the house of God. The Bible lets us know that it's our job to do such a thing. Um, it is noteworthy that those people who heard about Jesus brought the need to Him to receive deliverance. They knew where to go to find deliverance for somebody else. Oftentimes, because they themselves had already been delivered. Your testimony is your greatest asset in reaching the community of Huntington and the tri-state area. What has the Lord done for you, or what has he done for someone that loved you? We sang the song a while ago, look what the Lord has done. How many can raise their hand and say, he healed my body? How many can say, he touched my mind? How about he saved me just in time? So I'm not just going to praise his name, although I'm going to praise his name. I'm also going to tell people about what God has done for me. Uh, that is not just something I'm supposed to do to, pro to, to, to propagate the gospel, but it's also the sign of a heart of gratitude and thankfulness. When you get something and, or something's gone good in your life, the thing that you will do all the time is tell people about it. Now listen, I've talked to several people about them shoes. They're wonderful. I've probably talked to more people the last four days about them shoes than I've talked about Jesus, God forgive me. But they're so comfortable, okay? Uh, so you have to make a, in your mind, you know what? I am going to share my story with somebody today. 
And then you look for what I call those divine appointments. God has daily assignments written for us that we have to be aware of and talk to somebody. Uh, it doesn't matter who it is. Just keep on the lookout for somebody that needs to hear about Jesus. It says in Mark chapter 1, 32 to 34, And now even when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased, and them that were possessed with devils, and all the city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many that were sick of divers diseases, and cast out many devils, and suffered not the devils to speak, because they knew him. The enemy knew who he was. The enemy, you want to know how you know when the enemy wants to, uh, knows who you are? It's when he wants to stop you. It's when he wants to get in your way, when, when he wants to somehow stymie what God is doing in your life. The devils, they, they, they were going to speak and tell things, and they were going to cause confusion. He wasn't ready to do certain things yet because his time hadn't come yet. He was still in this time of obscurity here in Mark chapter 1, verse 32 to 34, and yet they knew who he was. I want you to know that when you're full of the Holy Ghost, the people of God know who you are, and Jesus knows who you are, and so does the enemy. There were seven Seven sons of Sceva. You remember the story in the book of Acts. They were going out casting devils out of people by Jesus and by Paul. By Jesus whom Paul preached. They didn't even know Jesus. They just knew about what Paul preached. And that devil, he said, uh, Paul I know and Jesus I know, but who are you? And so when you have equity with God, when God knows your name, the enemy also knows your name. Because you have been covered by his name and you walk in faith with him. Uh, Acts 10, which I read a while ago, 34 to 38, talks about how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all. Everybody say all. Say it again. All. All that were oppressed of a devil. For God was with him. So how does this message to Cornelius begin? Because Paul here in verse uh, 40 or 38 saying, Jesus healed all that were pests of the devil. But Paul be, or Peter began his message by saying, uh, of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness accepted with him. He is telling the good news of Jesus Christ to people who are hungry and in need. The result of that miraculous display of God's word is the salvation that took place at Cornelius' house. And so when I talk about the miraculous word tonight, I'm not just talking about your testimony, but I'm also talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ. You have within your mouth and in your mind the ability to speak words into people's life that can be miraculous to them, and those words are the glorious story of who Jesus is and what Jesus Jesus has done. We just talked about how that the Lord healed you. That's a part of the gospel message that God is a healer. We talked about how that God saved you just in time. It wasn't always just saving you from sin. Maybe he saved you from a terrible accident. Maybe he saved you from a terrible decision that you were going to make and God put up roadblocks and you paid attention to what God put in front of you and he saved you or he delivered you from making that decision. That is a testimony of Jesus Christ to the world around you that if you will walk with God and if you will obey his word, if you will pay attention to the signs he puts in front of you, you can have victory just like I've had victory. And begin to talk with people and display to them the wonderful words of Jesus, the wonderful words of life. The miraculous word, then, is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the result of sharing the miraculous word is that you see the miraculous take place in people's lives. In Cornelius' house, they were born again. They began as he was preaching, the Bible says, they begin to speak in tongues in the middle of Peter's sermon. Now, I'm going to tell you something right now. If I'm ever preaching a message and the Holy Ghost begins to move and someone begins to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost while I'm preaching, I'm not going to be mad about that. Peter wasn't. He just said, can any man forbid water that these should be baptized as well as we? 
And how did they know that they received the Holy Ghost? Because they heard them speak with tongues. And so we need to be mindful of the move of the Spirit and operate in it. Um, how many of you, when you went to school, had to learn the New Colossus poem, part of it, that sits on the Statue of Liberty? Anybody had to memorize that in school? Was I the only one? There's Hunter back there a little bit. Your social studies? Yeah. Not like the brazen giant of Greek fame, with conquering limbs astride from land to land. Here at our sea-washed sunset gate shall stand a mighty woman with a torch whose flame is imprisoned lightning, and her name, mother of exiles. From her beacon hand glows worldwide welcome. Her mild eyes command the air bridge harbor that Twin Cities fame. Keep ancient lands your storied pomp, cries she with silent lips. And this is what she cries with silent lips. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Now that is a poem put up there by uh, her name, I think was Elizabeth, not Elizabeth, Emma Lazarus. She wrote 1883. And when she wrote that, it was eventually put on at the bottom of the Statue of Liberty, signifying that America was open to everybody. The tired, the poor, the huddled masses, yearning to breathe free. And so that was the silent cry that Emma Lazarus was talking about. But what we're talking about is not a silent cry, but we are telling people, bring your huddled masses, your tired, your poor, to the church. Bring them to, uh, we have somebody that you can talk to. His name is Jesus. We're, America is uh, full of situations and, and faults that we see every day around us. I mean, this month alone, we're going to have to be deluged by certain ideas and ideologies that are, uh, are a, uh, a bother to us. And so it's something that dilutes the family. And so we're dealing with that on a daily basis in America, not just this month, but all the time. Why? Because we're living in a nation who has forgot their God. They forgot what the foundation was. But Jesus said, and the church says as well, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Come unto Jesus. Uh, in the book of Revelation, it simply says the, the church and the bride say, Come, come. We need to have that kind of readiness in our spirit. Uh, not, how many get busy, you're task-oriented, and you go somewhere, and you're not paying attention to anybody else, and you go into a store, never look around at people, just go in there, buy your thing, walk out and get in your car and go back home. I do that as well. But I try, on occasion, to be mindful of my surroundings. I talk to somebody, my wife... Uh, thinks it's funny because I know most of the neighbors in our neighborhood. Why? Because I stop and talk to them. You never know. I got a young man across the street from us. His name is Nathan. Nathan's a good young man. He's a, a youth pastor at a church in, in uh, Proctorville. I, he's, he loves God, and I love that he loves God. And we have great discussions about the Word of God. And so I am working towards getting him to come here and visit us sometime. Why? Because I'm interested not just in developing a friendship with a neighbor, but I'm interested in somebody's soul, and particularly in this young man's ministry, that he feels that God has called him to do something for the Lord. And I want to help him do what he, fulfill that ministry in the way that God wants him to fulfill that ministry. Now, I might go to the store. I've gone to stores before, and I've seen people that were very, very sad, you could tell they were having a bad day. I simply smiled at them and said, how are you doing? And they would say, honestly, uh, not very good. So then I'd talk to them a little bit. Sometimes I've gone into restaurants and seen people and could tell something was wrong. How are you? Oh, I'm not feeling good in my body. There's been times in the middle of restaurants I've laid hands on people and, and prayed for them. I'm not telling this to brag on myself. I'm telling you this is a display of Jesus to other people. That you need to be mindful of those moments. And then somewhere in that time frame, invite them to come to the house of God. And, and, and not just invite them to come, but when they come, uh, spend time with them. Uh, one, of the, one of the issues that we have sometimes in the body of Christ is that we want people to come to the church, but we don't want to take them out after church to dinner and get to know them better. Uh, you need to build relationships with people. That's what wins people to the Lord. 
is your relationship with them as well. They want a relationship with Christ, but they want to know, can I trust this person? And if all I'm doing is bringing them to the house of the Lord and then letting them sit there and do nothing and not spend no time with them, then nothing happens from that. The relationships that I've had with people that have produced the most fruit when it comes to people living for the Lord are the relationships with which I've invested my time and my energy to be with people and continue sharing the good things of God with them. That's called discipleship, by the way. It's not just enough to bring in new converts, but then you have to also disciple them in the Word of God. Now, sometimes the Word of God is through a Bible study that you teach on a regular basis. A systematic Bible study helps to disciple people. But the most, the most effective discipleship is your example. How you live in front of people. If they know that you will tell a lie to get out of trouble, that you will throw somebody under the bus so that nobody will think badly of you, then they're probably going to look a little dimly at you as far as an example of how to live for Jesus Christ. But if they see that you are a man or a woman with an impeccable word, with an integrity that stays intact, then they're going to say, you know, I can trust in that person. I can rely upon them. And I know that the word that they're telling me about Jesus must be true because they wouldn't lie to me. So you and I, we see the miraculous Word of God performed in people's lives every day. And that miraculous word is the gospel of Jesus Christ. How many enjoy sharing your testimony with people? Okay, how many enjoy sharing Jesus with people? How many, uh, how many feel, I feel just as good. I may have gone to church service. I may have worshipped the Lord, I may have got sweaty, shouting, whatever, and I've had a great time in the Holy Ghost. But I feel just as well, if not better, when I see somebody in the street and I begin to talk to them and the unction from the Holy Ghost begins to fill my mouth with words I didn't plan on saying. Because the Holy Ghost gave me the words to say at just the right moment. And I could see something click in their mind. Or I see their eyes begin to dim with tears as God moves upon their spirit. Why? Because I'm sensitive to what's going on. And the Bible said, don't, don't practice the words you're going to, this is a paraphrase, don't practice the words you're going to speak to somebody when you see them. Instead, the Holy Ghost will give you the unction. And that's what we do. We just be aware. If you walk in the Spirit, you'll be led by the Spirit. If you're walking in the Spirit, the Spirit in you will speak out the words that need to be said in the people's lives at just the right moment, and it'll be a word fitly spoken at that right moment. And I've, I've had, it's the same feeling as I have when I preach the gospel. The same Holy Ghost anointing that hits me when I'm preaching the Word of God and flowing in that, in that movement of the Spirit, and I'm in deep waters in the Holy Ghost, it's the same feeling I get when I see somebody and I testify to them about Jesus, and those words come forth, you can see a change is going on in their mind and in their spirit. Why? Because I have shared with them the miraculous word. I've shared with them the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that gospel is doing something in them, performing a miracle in their life. And so when you speak that word, that word produces that miracle. So the, the church needs to be out in the open, broadcasting the miraculous word. That's about sowing seed, just sowing it everywhere we go. We don't judge the ground that we're sowing it on. That's, that's up to that person, between that person and Jesus Christ. Our job is simply to sow the seed. Because the sower went out to sow seeds. Some fell on rocky ground, some fell on good ground, some fell on ground that uh, wasn't good at all. And there's four types of ground there. Only out of those four, only one type of ground was a good ground. But the sower didn't discriminate to where he sowed seed. He simply sowed the seed that he was given. Your job is simply to sow and to spread and to broadcast the gospel of Jesus Christ in the people's lives so a miraculous harvest will take place in their life. I remember years ago, I, I was teaching a Bible study to two, two men. They were cousins. Uh, and so the one guy had this fabulous, wonderful testimony about God and what God had done in his life. And... Um, 
he would come to the Bible study with his notepad and pen and paper, and he was just eating up everything I was saying. And man, I was really focusing on this guy in my Bible study. The other guy was coming too. The other guy was bringing his notepad. He was bringing his Bible. And you know you've got a good Bible study, by the way, when they show up, not just with their Bible, but with their notepad and their pen. Because they're paying attention, they're writing down notes. And so here I am, I'm teaching these two guys. I'm really focused on the one. The other guy, he's there. I'm glad he's there, but I'm not really as focused on him. I put, in my mind, I was thinking this over here, this guy's going to be the one that's going to be something for Jesus. Ended up, that guy, uh, he had issues in life and he kind of went through some rough times and he flamed out. But the other guy, the guy I didn't give any attention to, that's the guy that became the preacher of the gospel. He died tragically in a car accident a couple years ago, but he's the one that became the preacher. He's the one that affected life-changing decisions in people's life and, and, and helped them make eternal decisions that they were saved. And to this day, people still talk about him in a wonderful, positive way. But me, I was judging something. I was judging soil. I was judging ground. And it is not your job, it is my, my job to judge a soil. We're simply supposed to broadcast a seed. That means we go and we broadcast a seed to the poor. We broadcast a seed to the wealthy. We broadcast seed to those who have professional jobs, who have gone to college to be uh, whatever, lawyers, doctors, uh, whatever they're going to be, engineers. We broadcast that. Then we broadcast it to the ones who have not gone to those. It doesn't matter where you sow the seed. God is not a respecter of persons. That's what Peter said in the verse that I read, the first verse. I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. He doesn't care what kind of soil it is. It's not your job. It is just your job to sow the Word of God into people's life. When you say, well, I'm not a preacher. It doesn't matter. Everybody's called a minister. If you believe in Jesus, you are called to do that. Because there are supposed to be some accompanying signs that follow believers. So in his book, uh, Everyday Church, the missionary, remember Alan Calhoun that came here a couple, about a year ago? He's from Nor Norway, I think it is, or Sweden. He, was a, he did a great job. I enjoyed him. And so he wrote a book. In his book, he begins talking about Mark chapter 16, verses 15 to 20, he said to them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs and following. When you are a believer and you go out and you begin to sow seed and you preach everywhere, you share this gospel everywhere, God will confirm His word with signs following. That is part of the power of the miraculous word. God will confirm His word. Let me give you an example. Here it is. Luke, he is writing to Theophilus in Acts chapter 1, and he says, The former treatise have I wrote to you, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Every time Jesus would teach, there would be a confirmation of his word with signs following. Every time Jesus would, would perform the miraculous, he would also preach a word that people need to hear. And so when you begin to preach and share the gospel of Jesus Christ, count on it, there will be miraculous signs that follow you. If you want to see that kind of response in our day, then you need to go and share the gospel. Uh, notice that it says these signs shall follow them that believe. And because I believe, signs then are going to be demonstrated in the church. So then the question is asked, if I believe, so where are the signs? Look at your neighbor and say, where are the signs? Where are the signs? Well, there's two other phrases 
in this passage in Mark 16. The first is to go ye and then follow them. He said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. If you want signs to follow you, the sign that you believe is that you're going into all the world and you're preaching or sharing the gospel to every creature. And then those signs shall follow them that believe. Because as he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And then it says, these signs shall follow them that believe. Who is it following? It's following those who have believed and been baptized and now are going into all the world and preaching and sharing the miraculous word of God to a lost and dying world. When you do that, it's not just enough to say, I believe. He that believeth and is baptized. These signs shall follow them that believe. I believe. Look at your neighbor and say, I believe. Now look at them and say, now go. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. If you believe, signs will follow you. Not because you believe, but because you go into all the world and you share the gospel with somebody. I'm not saying you got to get up and preach a three-point message with a hook that draws sinners to an altar of repentance. I'm saying share your story, share the story of what Jesus Christ has done for you and how the gospel has been made real in your own life. And when you do that, people will be miraculously healed and they shall be recovered. It says, because when you do that, in my name, they're going to cast out devils, they'll speak with new tongues, Take up serpents. If they drink any dead thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay, shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. But you can't do that sitting in your front room, reading a book or watching the television, staying away from people. You can't do that being isolated. You can't do that just coming to church only when the doors are open and never going out into the world and being a witness to people. You have to go out there and share the miraculous word of Jesus Christ to this lost and dying world. And so that miraculous word, which was shared by the other church, the same miracles, and Bible said, even greater works than these shall ye do. Jesus told them that. Greater works than what I'm doing, you're going to do through the apostles. And the, Acts, the book of Acts is not just the Acts of the apostles, it's the Acts of the Holy Ghost working through the apostles. I don't heal nobody. You don't heal nobody. What is healing them is the fact that we believe on Jesus and Jesus heals them. It's the power that's in his name. Uh, Acts 5, verse 12 to 16. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the rest, there's no man join himself in them, but the people magnified them. And believers were the more added to the church, or to the Lord, multitudes both of men and women. Insomuch that they brought forth sick into the streets. The word had spread so far about the ministry and the power of the Holy Ghost working through the apostles that people brought these sick and these multitudes into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed, I like this phrase, Every one, everybody was healed that they brought to the apostles. And it wasn't the apostles that was doing the healing. It was the miraculous word. It was the gospel of Jesus Christ that was being preached to them and shared with them. And these signs were following them. They heard about the miracles. They heard about the blind seeing. They heard about the lame walking. They heard about the deaf hearing. They heard and they came and they brought their loved ones and they laid them on the ground. Those who were sick just so that the shadow Peter never did that. Or, I'm sorry, that never happened in the ministry of Jesus but it happened in the ministry of Peter because Jesus said greater works in the, Jesus ain't jealous of you. Yeah. 
He wants to see greater works done in you and through you. That's why I pray, Lord, manifest your love through me. Manifest your power through me. Manifest your grace through me. Manifest God the Holy Spirit through me. Help me to operate in the gifts of the Spirit, not for my own gain, but for somebody else. Because it has nothing to do with me. When it becomes about us personally and not about the people, we have failed miserably in our understanding what the church is here for. The church is not here to be a, a, a club of superhero people. The church is here to win the lost. So the gates of hell cannot and shall not ever prevail against the church. So if you want to receive, if you want to see that response in our day, then you believe, you who believe. How many say I'm a believer tonight? I'm a believer then you need to go and share the miraculous word of Jesus Christ to people around you. And then if you'll do that, if you'll go in faith because you believe, share the gospel with somebody, you will see the miraculous. Now, we want you to bring people to the house of God. We want that. We want this place filled so that all the sea foam green disappears with different colored shirts and dress tops and all that. That'd be wonderful. Okay? But don't let, well, I got to wait till Sunday and it's Wednesday afternoon to bring them to the house of God. No. Pray for them right then. You believe. These signs are supposed to follow those who believe. All that God is weighing on is upon your action to go and to minister the word of faith in that moment. The miraculous word. That's what I'm teaching about tonight. The miraculous word. Praise God. Does that make sense to you tonight? How many want to share this gospel? Amen. Why don't you stand with me tonight? The miraculous word is the gospel of Jesus Christ. You have it within your power the ability to share the Word of God. Now, you do your part, God will do His. If you take a step forward, God will meet you there. But you got to take that step forward tonight. And so we're getting ready to close. And I, if, you, if you believe what I've preached or taught tonight, I want you to come forward. And I just want you to make a commitment to God. God, I am going to be mindful of my surroundings. I am going to not just be a believer, but I'm going to be a believer that puts it into action and go. Because we have a commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. All right? So if you believe what I've taught tonight and you want to make a commitment to be a soul winner, to be used by God, come on up here. The Bible says, He believeth and is baptized shall be damned. He that believeth not, he believeth and is baptized shall be Shall be saved. He believe it not, shall be dead. So let's come forward right now. Hallelujah. That's right. Let's sing that as you're coming. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. That's right. Take my hands, Lord, take my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak through me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Hallelujah, sing it again. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Can you?
So let's pray together right now. Father, in Jesus' name, help us, Lord, to be mindful of those around us, God. Help us, Jesus, to speak the word of life to somebody, God, the miraculous word of the gospel of Jesus Christ, to speak faith in their lives, to be mindful of those around us. And then, God, as we've talked to them and prayed with them and seen you begin to work, simply say to them, come and go with me to my Father's house. In Jesus' name, Lord, we want to see the miraculous. We want to see those, God, who are sick recover. We want to see, God, those who need to be born again to be born again. We're asking you, Lord, to give us that strength and that faith and that boldness, God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You can use anything, Lord. You can use me. Make that your prayer tonight. Just raise your hand. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, take my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak through me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. See, here's the thing about being used by God. You have the Holy Ghost. You have been given the gift. What do you do with a gift? You use it. My wife gave me some good cologne for Christmas. It does me no good sitting on my chest of doors unless I open up the lid and I spray it. Then I've used it. It's the same thing with the Holy Ghost inside of you. The God that we serve has given you the gift of the Holy Ghost, which means He has empowered you to be witnesses of Him all over the world, but especially in our tri-state area. And so you have to not just be willing to be used by God, but you need to be willing to use the gift that God has given you. How many have a tongue? All right, who doesn't have a tongue? Would you raise your hand? If you got a tongue, you've been gifted with something to speak the words of life to somebody. How many would raise your hand and say, I would like to do that, but I just get scared. I don't have boldness. There's a hand there. Thank you for being honest. Anybody else? I just get a little scared and nervous about it. I'm afraid to speak out. I'm afraid I'll, they'll think I'm silly. Just raise your hand right now and close your eyes. Father, in Jesus' name, give us boldness by the power of the Holy Ghost. Lord, they prayed for the Holy Ghost and you gave them, or they prayed for boldness in the book of Acts and you gave them more Holy Ghost. Now, God, I pray the Holy Ghost would fall upon each one here in an extra added dimension of power and grace, that the greater grace would grow within them to be a witness of your glory and power, Lord, right now in Jesus' name. Let that boldness overcome. Lord, when they feel that impetus of the Holy Ghost and they see somebody that's hurting or in need and the Holy Ghost says they need me, give them the boldness, God, to go to that person and say, can I talk to you about Jesus? In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yalabo shatanda la basata. Kotolobo satanda la baha. Yalabo shatanda lobo sata. I want you to see yourself right now laying hands on somebody in public and praying for them. I want you to, when you pray, that God would help you to be a witness, to envision yourself being a witness to somebody. Touching somebody, sharing the gospel. You envision yourself doing that. And that vision in your mind, God will begin to sow and He'll water that seed and it will come to pass in the name of Jesus. You will use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, take my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak through me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Let's do it one more time.
more time. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Is that your prayer tonight? If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, take my feet. Touch my heart, speak through me. 